What mistakes are you making on the ketogenic diet? Let's get real, if you're just getting started, it is complicated trying to figure out if you're doing this properly and you might just need some help and maybe you're making some of these mistakes and you don't even know it. So if you are interested in videos like this, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment if you are new to the ketogenic lifestyle. I'm very excited to talk to people who are just getting started. Love to help you guys out, which is why I make videos like this. If you want to figure out what those five most common mistakes are, then just keep watching. Okay, mistake number five. You are not tracking your macros. Let's get real, I know it's tedious, I know it's difficult, but if you are new to ketogenic lifestyle, even if you're somebody who's tracked your macros for a long time in apps like MyFitnessPal or Carb Manager, listen, you need to be doing it, and it's hard sometimes when you're trying to figure out ratios of things. I personally use MyFitnessPal, and it helps me look at not only my macronutrient percentage breakdown because as you know if you are in a ketogenic lifestyle you are trying to aim for 75% give or take fat 20 give or take protein and 5% carbohydrate there are slight skews and variances depending on your goals but that is the general uh, gold standard if you will and how are you gonna know if you're exactly on track with those percentages if you're just guessing you can't just go by carb count it's very difficult you really need to make sure that your proteins are low and that leads me to mistake number four you're overdoing it on protein Let's get real, a lot of people, how many times can I say let's get real? I'll take a shot every time I say let's get real. Let's get real! <laughs> Most people who embark on a low carb diet uh, end up eating way more fat and they think that it is a high protein diet, which it is not. It is a high fat diet. You're either running on glucose or fat and that is your body. It is very much like a hybrid car and it can do both, but you have to tell it what to do and you can't provide both and it can't run on both at the same time. So you need to be giving it high fat, moderate protein and low carb, hence the 75, 25, five. A lot of people send me pictures of their plates and ask me, is this okay? And it's a piece of dried chicken breast and some broccoli and I'm going, no, because it needs to be a high fat meal. That is high protein, low carb. And that is not what keto is. It is not what a low carb diet is. And it's just because they don't know the science and they don't have a coach helping them or they're not reading enough information and doing it on their own. Don't overdo it on protein. 75% fat, 20% protein, 5% carbs. Start there and then get back to me. Mistake number three. You are not supplementing your electrolytes. Once you've been on a ketogenic lifestyle for a little while, you will find that you are shedding a lot of water weight and that means that you are losing your electrolytes and need to replenish it much more than on a standard American diet. So you need to be taking either a supplement or getting your electrolytes in with a bone broth or something like that. Adding salt and sodium into your food, if it's a healthy salt, like pink Himalayan salt, or I'm a big advocate for real salt, I think it tastes delicious, and to me it's got a great mineral breakdown. You're not supplementing those electrolytes into your food and then you start to feel sluggish and weird and your bathroom time isn't great and you just feel run down and you go, oh, I don't think the keto diet's for me because I don't feel good. And it's not because of the diet, it's because you're not supplementing your electrolytes. You're shedding all this water and not replenishing on those electrolytes. So I advocate for magnesium, potassium, and sodium supplementation. However you want to do it, that's up to you. Being very liberal with your pink Himalayan salt or real salt on all of your foods. And all of a sudden you're going to start to realize that you feel a-okay. And it wasn't the diet's fault. It was your fault. Mistake number two, you're expecting results overnight. Listen, if you are somebody who has a ton of weight to lose, all of a sudden it's going to be like eight pounds in one week and then five pounds the next week. And then all of a sudden you get to that third week and it's a two pound loss or a one pound loss or even a half pound loss. And you're going, oh, I don't think it's working anymore. You're going to lose a lot of weight in the beginning because it's going to be water weight because carbohydrates carry water molecules with them. So when you stop giving your body those carbohydrates, then you're not gonna have all that additional water hanging onto your body. So expect a whoosh in the very beginning, and then it's going to slow down, and that's okay. Slow weight loss is healthy weight loss, is sustainable weight loss. Don't give up, be consistent, and don't be surprised if your weight loss 
goes like this and then is a slower slower pace from then on that is not a problem of the diet you are not doing anything wrong if you're doing everything right that didn't make sense just be persistent be consistent don't give up i know it's hard in the beginning all right that only leaves our number one mistake when starting the ketogenic diet and that is eating too many keto products that's right i do advocate for you know supplementing in some keto products here and there to make your life easier and sustainable but in the beginning you are not going to be doing yourself any favors by going for a ton of sugar-free things confusing your mind and your body sure in the beginning using products as a means of transitioning out of your old lifestyle is a method i find when you're starting the ketogenic diet starting off eating whole foods is the best way to go about it it will make your whole keto lifestyle much simpler it will teach your body uh, to be most effective in terms of being in a ketogenic state and being in ketosis and you will not accidentally eat something that has hidden carbs in it i have a whole video on uh, sugar alcohols uh, i will link it up in the cards above me and it talks all about how some things are labeled sugar-free or low carb and they really aren't if you haven't seen that video go ahead and watch it right now it may be attributing to why you are not losing weight doing keto products that have maltitol etc are just not they're not gonna make you low carb it's false advertising it's not fair I wish there was something I could do about it for us all but there's not it goes hand in hand with a a point that I will couple with this number one mistake and that is not reading the ingredient list things that have maltitol uh, all sorts of uh, weird uh, fibers that have been added that are not real food that can compromise your weight loss compromise your ketogenic ketosis state and it's not worth it just so that you can have something that tastes like a candy bar when you can make something that tastes way better at home and you know exactly what's in it. Whole foods are the best foods, things that you know exactly what are in them. I'm not saying there aren't products out there that have a very clear cut ingredient list that are all good. I have a video on my channel already talking about things like enlightened ice cream that has a keto line right now and all of those ingredients are very straightforward. It's not a giant ingredient list of things. There are so many cauliflower crusts on the market it makes me i lose my because it's 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 trying to get you somebody who's trying to be low carb to buy their product because they want you to think it's low carb and you go on the back and the ingredients list is this long and it's got a bunch of stuff in it that you can't have like corn and or brown rice but it's telling you mainly that it's cauliflower and it's not so please make sure you are reading the ingredients lists not just the nutrition label but that's also important and the easiest way to avoid this mistake is to just eat foods that are whole foods that are not bought in a box that's it so i hope this video was helpful for you if you are new to the ketogenic lifestyle or not, maybe you've been doing it for a while and you're wondering what's going on or you're just curious how you can make your whole process just a little bit better. Please follow me on Instagram or my Facebook group. If you haven't already, I'll have all that information down below. And uh, if you need help with your ketogenic lifestyle, visit my website, Nutrition by Samantha, and I will be happy to talk to you. DM me on Instagram and I respond to every single DM. If you ever have any questions or you need advice, please message me on there and or ask me in the comments i respond to every single comment thank you so much for watching like and subscribe and i'll see you next time on my channel for more information that can maybe help you live a better life bye